Time Zone! Pacific or Eastern? Neither. This time zone is from Sigma on Famicom in 1991. So late into the Famicom's life that the Super Famicom was already released. I've already done a let's play and a long play of this old school side scrolling platformer, but it's not like anyone wants to watch that stuff. A dead silent title screen? Not usually a sign of quality. As you can see, this has the fan translation patch from King Mike. While Time Zone's no masterpiece, it's definitely a cut above the vast majority of Famicom releases. Here's the opening cutscene. Yeah, it wouldn't be a Famicom game without two men battling over a woman's body, right? There's a weird age gap going on, though. That's the plot! To the best of my knowledge, the player character never gets a name. I'll call him Ken. He looks like a Ken to me. The only twist comes at the end of the first world, after we defeat this car Professor Time apparently brought to life. Ken dives right into that time portal, leaving his old life behind forever. From here on out, we'll be pursuing the Professor and Horika through five additional time zones. Well, not time zones, but time periods, an important distinction that Sigma apparently missed when titling their platformer. As you may have guessed, Chrono Trigger this is not. The time travel's just a gimmick to help the game stick out from all the other platformers shoveled onto the Famicom. Each time period has a map screen depicting oddly rectangular islands and five levels. No backtracking. There are four recurring level types, standard side-scrolling, forced scrolling, and levels featuring an obstacle rising and sinking that force us to strategically seek high ground. The fourth type is the bonus level that occurs as the third stage of every world, when we drop into a colorful set where an enemy character asks us to count bees or remember trivia or something like that. Correct answers yield fabulous extra life prizes. These are quite useful, believe me. Obviously, Aoyama Shingo's enemy designs are wonderfully odd. There are levitating aliens, evil cowboy boots, and hopping googly-eyed soda cans. My favorite are these flying snails with their daffy smiles. Professor Time can't be all bad if he built these guys. But the Wild West level opening states that Professor Time, uh, controls Indians. Uh-oh. Time Zone contains some appalling caricatures of a generic Plains Nation guy. This kind of thing was sadly not that uncommon back then. It's not even the worst thing on the Famicom by a long shot. In the 80s and 90s, Japanese pop culture had appropriated American racism with wild abandon. Though Ken can only take one hit before losing a life, overall Time Zone isn't particularly hard, but it is punishing. Each game over means we have to restart the world from the first level. What's that? You lost to the boss because you need a few tries to memorize its attack pattern? Well, tough luck! Played through all five levels again to have another chance! Back then, a lot of video games pulled stunts like that to inflate the playtime. Frustration gave players better value for their money. Time Zone came out in 1991. You know what that means. That's right, Ken's a cool 90s kid with a skateboard and baseball cap. Collect enough bells and for some reason we gain a skateboard and invincibility a la Super Mario's Starman. I never liked this. The skateboard controls a bit differently from Ken's feet and moves more quickly. Not desirable features in levels focused on tricky platforming. As you may have noticed, we attack with our baseball cap. Sort of swings around Ken, as though attached to a chain or spring, and then pops back onto his head. Incidentally, if we instinctively try jumping on the enemies Mario style, we'll be okay. Ken can actually ride the enemies, and Time Zone expects you to if you want to jump high enough onto the end level ropes for correspondingly high scores. You'd be forgiven for thinking I just cut to another level in Time Zone, but no. 
This is Wanpaku Kokun no Gourmet World, a totally different game. The North American version changed the title, tweaked the difficulty, and swapped the youthful protagonist for a wacky French chef. Though the American cover art is... well, it certainly grabs your attention. How are these games so similar? They got the same designers, Enokenji, Aoyama Shingo, and Kuohara Yasuomi. If Wikipedia is to be believed, this is the same Enokenji who in 1995 gave the world the FMV horror game D, whose main horror is how bad it is, as well as the cult classic Enemy Zero and the incredibly bizarre and disturbing D2. Time Zone bears a visionary's fingerprints. Look, time is money, and time is running out. Time to address the elephant in the room. Time. Specifically, Professor Time. What's going on with him? Granted, he's a bootleg Dr. Wily who specializes in time travel instead of robotics, even prostrates himself the same way. But Dr. Wily had an objective. Use robots to conquer the world. There's a reason he's fighting Rockman. Ken and Haruka, though, are just kids. And time is, what, 60? Why beat up a little boy and kidnap a little girl? What's his goal here? The guy can travel through time, has created his own pocket dimension, and can bring inanimate objects to life. What more could Professor Time want? He's basically a god at this point. I don't think the assault on Ken and Haruka is a random attack. Nah, there's bad blood between Time and these kids. Here are my theories. Either Ken's parents or older sibling have foiled the Professor's plans in the past, or as a grown-up, Ken causes the Professor trouble, and so the Professor travels back in time to screw with his rival when he was a defenseless kid. But mackerel phones, couldn't the Professor be after Haruka rather than Ken? I considered that possibility, but I don't think so. The old man seems to kidnap her just to torment Ken. Any of these explanations leave unanswered questions. Where did Ken get this weaponized hat? What's the setting? Japan, right? No! We're moving through time, not space. And this same area somehow turns into the American Wild West, and then Sengoku period Japan. And Japan's real-life Sengoku period ended in 1600, but Time Zone Sengoku period is in 1632. Time Zone stumbles into the same trap as so much science fiction and predicts wild technological development at too early a date. In this case, levitating sky cities in contact with space aliens by 2010. I'm not saying that didn't happen in 2010, but I didn't really pay attention to the news yet then. Look at this 1991 map. Half the city's underwater. Obviously, Time Zone is not set in our universe, even at the start. We must be witnessing an alternate history 1991, where catastrophic flooding has already begun as a result of climate change. In the extremely creepy visual novel adventure game you know, uh, Arima Kodai, the protagonist's abusive father, discovered that time travel is possible, but never to the same universe. The time traveler always lands in a slightly different one. I think Professor Time's reckless universe hopping is moving Ken and Haruka into parallel Earths increasingly divergent from ours, where Japan was like the Wild West, and the Tokugawa Shogunate never formed. Also, nobody can persuade me that Professor Time isn't an older Arima Kodai. Although, frankly, he's less evil than Kodai was. How does Ken's journey end? After a two-part boss battle, he defeats Professor Time and destroys his time machine. The Professor hurtles off into the void, but it's extremely abrupt and he doesn't even stop smiling. Then, Haruka descends in a bubble, and she and Ken dance together. That's who was holding the rope at the end of each level. A flock of quails, apparently. At a highway in the hills at twilight, Ken and Haruka dance together. It's very cute, a little surreal. Perhaps they'll never be able to return to their original universe, but if they can be together, maybe that's okay. 
Were it not for the zany humor and cartoon graphics, Time Zone would just be a blip on the Famicom radar. But it does have zany humor and cartoon graphics, not to mention Eino Kenji, so it is memorable. Hey, you can uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more of this kind of thing. Uh, the next Famicom Adventures will be about Dig Dug 2. Uh, I have a Let's Play of uh, Hellblade coming up. And an X-rated video. Yeah, adults only. Ooh.